Um, our next guest was described by North Shore Mayor Andrew Williams uh, as someone he had utter contempt for. We will talk about him with our next guest in a moment. But before the news, um, businessman Peter Shirtcliffe's arguments for abolishing MMP were discussed and why he is stepping up his campaign for the second time. One man who is supporting him is ACT leader Rodney Hyde, who joins us now. Rodney, good morning to you. Good morning. A lot of people will find it strange that you would support the abolition of MMP, um, given that that's why you're here. Sure, but I don't think the um, political system of New Zealand should be built around myself or the ACT Party. What we've always said is there was an expectation uh, when we had an MMP introduced, there was an expectation that the people would get to have a say, that there would be another referendum. And we've always supported that. Amongst the ACT Party, there's a wide range of views. Uh, but ultimately, it belongs to the people. Helen Clark denied that opportunity to have that vote, and I think it's great that we are actually having a, a referendum now on the voting system. What I'd like to see is it done a bit quicker and it done in a fair way. All right, a couple of quick questions. Should we have gone for MMP in the first place, yes or no? No. Do you think it has proved to be an absolute failure? No. So what are the positives that have come out of it? Well, MMP does give you a bit more variety, a bit more fun, I guess. You have some sort of more hijinks in Parliament than you'd have with First Past the Post. Um, and, and you do get a greater range of people, clearly, in, in Parliament. The likes of Nandor Tanchos and Sue Bradford would never get elected under First Past the Post. Is that a good thing? Has that proved to be a good thing, do you think? Um, it gives a, Parliament a safety valve. It allows people to let off steam. And so when you get a greater representation, that's a good thing. That would be the one positive of MMP, the greater diversity of people in Parliament. But to me, there are several negatives too. All right. Um, let's look at those then. The, the greatest negatives, too many people in Parliament? No, it's not that that bothers me the most. I think it's that you don't get a decisive result at election mm. time and that the people, the voters, aren't really in control. It gives a lot more control to the politicians and to the political parties and sort of disempowers the electorate a lot more. The great thing about First Past the Post is you get a result, uh, you're having MPs that represent you in the region. And, and people can be held to account. They can be held to account. And also you can understand it if you start talking about MMP or STV or... Uh, MP or SM, uh, you know, just people lose l lose an understanding. But Is that what? Because I know that you're actually a supporter of First Past the Post. Yes. Unlike Peter Shirtcliffe, Cliff, who we've just heard from, who believes that that would mm. be a, a step backwards, we should we should work forwards towards a better proportional representation system. Yes. Yes, that's true, but I'm always in a minority view. Uh, probably that's why I'm an act. But it seemed to me that First Past the Post is a system that's sort of rooted in New Zealand's history and tradition. Mm. We understand it well. It served us well. It gives us a good result. You know, it does have a negative in that you tend to get the two-party system, but you do actually get MPs that are held to account back to an electorate. Is one of the biggest problems with MMP that really the electorate are too stupid to understand it? No, not at all. Um, because you said a couple of times, in, speaking in favour of first past the post, on a couple of occasions you have said it's easy to understand. It, it is. It is easy to understand. You know, you have an MP, you vote for them, and, and they go if they get the most votes. And so in that way, and the party that gets the most uh, MPs uh, forms the government. That's quite easy. So is it then that one of the problems with MMP is that it isn't easy to understand, and people people really are easy. too stupid or not interested enough to use it properly. Well, it's, it's not that they're, they're too stupid. It's actually that it's controlled by the parties and by the politicians because you can vote for whoever you like, but at the end of the day, it's going to be the political parties and the politicians that decide who the government will be. Yeah. That's what troubles me deeply about MMP. My idea of a functioning democracy is that the voters get to decide, not politicians after the election. And that's the difficulty with MMP. And it's not that you're stupid that you don't understand that. It's actually you understand it and you get a bit annoyed. First past the post would see ACT with only one Member of Parliament, you? Oh, I would see ACT finished. You, you, well, you could still win your seat, obviously, could Oh, you? yeah, but, I mean, you know, MM, uh, ACT is a creature of MMP, um, undoubtedly. Um, we saw early on that you were going to need, need a party that was going to promote freedom and choice and responsibility, that was going to advocate for markets and competition and entrepreneurship. Uh, you need that under MMP. Um, under First Past the Post, I don't believe the ACT Party would survive. So are you almost saying then that ACT is a waste of time? Because if you're no, saying, not at all. You're, but, but you're supporting First Past the Post, which by your own admission would see the end of ACT. No, but so I we're better this. off without ACT. Uh, 
no, understand this, Paul. I think you, 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 you're misinterpreting what I'm saying. I believe, first of all, and so does the ACT Party, that it should be up to the people of New Zealand to say which way they're going to vote. Mm. Um, and what system they like. I don't think they will go for first past the post. People naturally put to me, well, which way are you going to vote? I don't run away from that. Mm. Um, I'll be voting for first past the post. I do not think that first past the post will win. Um, I do believe that ACT has made a big contribution to Parliament over the years and is making a big contribution to this government. But I don't believe that the, you know, the electoral system should be built around a particular party. I think that's the problem that we have with politicians deciding the electoral mm. system. That's why we're so keen for people to have yep, their no, say. You're right there, and it represents one of the biggest problems, as I see it, with MMP, which is the tail wagging the dog, which happens most of the time. Well, we don't mind the ACT tail wagging the dog, <laughs> do we, Paul? All right. Um, very quickly, I want to talk about um, the man who described you uh, allegedly in an email uh, as someone he holds utter contempt for. You and Morris Williamson, how do you feel about being put in the same camp as Morris Williamson? Oh, I'm very relaxed about that. I'm not troubled by um, the ramblings of Mayor Andrew Williams. What troubled me about the reports was reports that he'd been drinking. Um, it would appear, uh, if the Sunday Star Times is correct, that he'd drunk quite a lot, um, behaved in a way that would suggest that he had drunk quite a lot, but then he drove home. And in doing that, he's putting himself and others at risk. I think he's actually not handling the stress very well, and I think he should consider his options. Should he resign? I believe so. I think his behaviour has been um, very subpar. At the very least, he needs to do this. He needs to front up to the people of the North Shore and actually explain his behaviour. Given the um, petition, almost, you could call it, from councillors on the North Shore, which is being put in place at the moment, is he a negative influence? I mean, in, in your capacity, trying to, trying to assemble a super city, is he a no, negative influence? Uh, no, he makes no difference to me. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're providing a good system of governance for Auckland, and a particular mayor or particular councillor isn't an issue. I mean, that's up to the people. Well, he's, he's we... the mayor. I mean, it's, it's a super city, a collection of different cities, and the mayor of one of those cities holds you in contempt. I mean, he must, yeah, be, a, he must be a problem. Dealing with him must be a problem. Oh, I think everyone finds that, to be honest, with Andrew Williams. Um, but it doesn't actually affect me and my job particularly. I went to the North Shore with Morris Williamson, what was it, on Friday. I know. He, I have to... he warned his councillors that you were on the way. No, he actually warned his staff and told his staff that they should abuse us. Now, in actual fact, the staff were all highly embarrassed and the staff had a, had a... They were very proud of the work they'd done with their online consenting thing. I've got to say, they were very impressive staff and very professional. Now, my problem with the Mayor's behaviour isn't its impact on me, it's its impact on the staff, who are actually proud to work there, trying to do a good job, and they have a Mayor sending emails late at night um, around to them, telling them to abuse you know, visiting politicians. And actually, um, it's not whether they agree with what Rodney Hyde or Morris Williamson are doing, um, it's actually you know, just sort of respect and keeping the staff out of the political process. The staff are professional people. Rodney Hyde, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.